things to uh, dispose, that is sell uh, the excess dollars in 24 hours. We're looking at you know, what that means, the sense of that. And um, uh, in the meantime, Cheson in Abulegba has called in. Good morning to you, Cheson. Good, good morning, Uncle Yaris. Thank you for calling in, sir. Yeah, Dr. Muda Yusuf, good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, the, I think uh, the discussion this morning has been uh, illuminating, and, uh, and, uh, and my contribution to the topic this morning is that, uh, as uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf has rightly pointed out, the imperfection in the market will definitely make all the, uh, the uh, market principle being deployed ineffective. Number one aspect of it is the one that he had mentioned about the source of uh, the funding of the parallel market, illicit funds, so many of them. So, so many of them. So what we have today, we have to sanitize the system first. The cases of uh, oil theft, they are there. Even the money from the government circle too, the governors, the, the, the officials, high officials of government, with the budgetary allocation being increased, most of them are not comfortable spending Naira, they to the government official, high top, uh, top government official too, they are involved in this uh, aspect of uh, converting the Naira into, into dollar because that is what they spend. The drug money too, are there, there are so many other sources. So, me too, I don't support the idea of uh, trying to close the... Uh, the, 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 the price that the black market kept with the official one. That is why we are having this problem. Government should intervene. Right. Take the, the rate at okay. which, well. at which the, the, the dollar is going to change to dollar at the official. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Shesan, for, for calling in. And um, maybe this is where I can ask Dr. Yusuf that. Uh, because of his explanations that ordinarily this should be a highly regulated uh, sector, this whole banking and exchange uh, uh, area, and um, he himself is a proponent ordinarily of a free market economy. Uh, but he also has cautioned that there, however, are attenuating circumstances where people can't just leave it, go ho -ha. What would be your recommendation seeing as you're here, you're in this environment, you know this environment. Um, how do we get better, a better yield, if I can put it that way, uh, out of our policy thrust? You see, uh, this is about economic management. Okay. And it is always good for policy to be predicated on proper study and evidence, not just discussions among financial market operators. We need to do a proper impact analysis of the reforms so far, especially around this foreign exchange, so that we can come to a proper realization of what is the appropriate pathways, ideologically, if I may put it that way. Because for me, from the way things are unfolding, I think we need to be careful the way we submit entirely to all this IMF and World Bank approach to the management of the economy. Okay. Because of the imperfections in this but economy. But do we do that? Do we submit almost, almost com entirely? Com entirely yeah, yeah. I know there are World Bank and IMF have to, recommendations. We have to merge. They are very strong proponents of that. Uh, they've, proponent of complete removal of subsidy. Yeah. Only recently they were saying that there is still subsidy. The government should completely remove it. You understand what I'm mm. saying? Mm. Where will that leave the citizens? Yes. And what, what is their objective? They are helping the world economy according to them? No, you see, you see they, they feel that we need to create a space where that is completely private sector driven. And the danger of that is that 
the objective of private sector players is profit. The objective of a government is about equity. Yes. It's about economic development. Mm -hmm. It's about reducing inequality. So profit objective and development objectives don't always converge. And because of the imperfections in the system, and you, you intervene in the market to the extent of the imperfections. I'll give you an example. If you leave the financial market just entirely to market forces, today interest rate is above 25%. You need investors in manufacturing. You need investors in manufacturing. I mean, yes, in manufacturing, in agriculture, in mining, in infrastructure, in real estate. Can you fund any investment like that with 25, 26% interest rates? Okay, so these are some of the... Uh, you, these are gaps. These are, okay. And in economics, we call them market failure. Let, let, before so, you continue, Doctor, yes. sorry for interrupting you. Mr. George, uh, thank you for holding on for a bit. Uh, please go ahead now. Thank you. Okay, all right. good morning and good morning to... Dr. Yusuf, Uncle Yore, it was uh, President Buhari that once said, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill Nigeria. How, how do you see a situation, Uncle Yore, where banks are themselves restricting the dollar? You want to ask, how did they manage to have $5 billion in their books? In the midst of capacity of dollar and foreign exchange to meet our needs in the country. Nobody, nobody seems to be asking that question. I was surprised when, when the CBN uh, governor said they should say what they have, and we discovered that they have not less than five billion dollars in their votes. What were they keeping it for? So the corruption in the system is so much that we will have to do something very drastic. Unfortunately, even the government officials, some of them that cannot, that, that, that have immunity, are involved in this racketeering. So, what we need to do, I will ask, uh, ask uh, uh, the doctor. Is, Nigeria is the country I have been to where parallel market is just a normal thing. You go any street, you find uh, people, their, their business is just to trade in, uh, in Naira to foreign currencies. Mm. The government, if you ask me, the government should totally ban uh, 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 the, the parallel market. Let there be accredited road change. Only the accredited ones by the central bank who will sell at the rate that are known. Anything other than that is illegal and it should be followed up. Okay. If you if we leave it like this, like I have said, it will never change. There are some who are bent and say, okay, bring any policy. We are ready for you. We are ready to, to, to truncate it. And we will be going around and around and around and around. I just wish the president the strength to tackle this problem. But we need to be very drastic about it. All right, then. Thank, Thank you, you very much for calling in, Mr. George. Uh, Dr. Yusuf. Because it's, you've spoken about some of these areas. Uh, but then, thank you, Mr. George, for just bringing a figure to all of this, that it is so that it's in the region of $5 billion uh, US. Well, but, but then you explained how, well, in a manner of speaking, all of those dollars in the, within the banking sectors uh, have different, quote-unquote, owners. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. No, it, it is important, because he mentioned the issue of corruption. Yes. As did Ada. Yes, the, the corruption component, although we don't have studies yet empirically, but there is no doubt that the corruption factor in the exchange rate is also very significant. Because first, the dollar is portable. Second, uh, because of issues of traceability mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. uh, people who are corrupt and uh, have this money, they prefer it because you can't easily trace it. Because the money goes through the BDCs, the BDCs just give cash, and people take the money away. So a lot of pressure is coming also from that side. So if you're able to deal with the challenge of corruption and these leakages, then you perhaps you'll be getting somewhere. 
But another danger in what is happening now is that now we have moved the exchange rate from 900 and so to 1,350, 1,004. That means that apart from the inflationary effect, which is very, very profound, mm -hmm. this is going to compound the problem that the citizens are complaining about. We now see another massive movement of funds or resources from the people back to government coffers. Because that is more revenue to government. And if you are not careful, it can become a vicious circle. Indeed. I was now, going to say the that. fact allocation will now increase, more money will now get into the hands of uh, bureaucrats and politicians. If you come back to the, to the, to, to, to the exchange, I mean, foreigners, you know, all of these things, it's, it's a fairly complex matter. What about when Mr. But, George said that? If you ask him if you could get rid of the parallel rate altogether. Well, how practical is that? Many of them are not even operating illegally. You see them on the streets and all of that. So the challenge of even enforcement of that kind of thing. Because you have people who are registered already. They were rationalized at the time to reduce their number. And even those who are working on the streets, some of them can even show you certificates. They are representatives of particular companies that has been registered. <laughs> one, one moment, please, sir. Uh, Elijah Zubair has been waiting for a while uh, in Alimosho. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Yuri. Thank you for good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning to Doctor Yusuf. Okay. Good yes, my my point is this. Yes, my point is this. I think uh, Nigeria is facing. We are facing a lot of geopardies right now, and it is unfortunate. You know, you see, there used to be a, you know an adage in Yoruba adage. Oh, you talk karawo, umba karade. Oh, ti kongu barayo. We are in a serious geopardy. Why, why, why am I saying this? We are facing a lot, Nara instability, security instability, you understand? Which is putting, you know, inflation instability. That is why I said it's a double geopardy. So, Dr. Yusuf, it's, it's, it's a social, but one thing that surprised me is that now the CBA is, you know, it's, it's now, now detected that the commercial bank is holding such huge amount of dollars. That means there's no proper supervision. There's something wrong within the system. And to me, it's a sabotage. Whatever the government is intending to do, it's a sabotage. So, now, Dr. Yusuf, you see, I don't know. You know, you remember there was a time before I mean, the CBN took, you know, did a, a kind of condition, which they never, they never appreciated. Now, people start saying that time that, look, you see, now the, 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 the money back people will see more of this money. Well, this, no, so how are we sure that this present condition, uh, the money back people will, see, will not see more of this money, and then we back to square one? You see, a lot of things that is going on already. Dr. Yusuf, you see, now people have even changed, say that, you know, Nigeria is not a producing country, we're not generating. We don't even hear anything about our refinery. You understand? Most of the things that we're supposed to be, you know, that are supposed to have our economy, we're not hearing about it. They keep on postponing, you know, jacking us all, you know, I mean, uh, 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 put, putting us in expectations. So, you see, that is why I said, Dr. Yusuf, we are in a serious problem. And I don't know, it's, it's unfortunate for this country, and we expect people like you to, you know, to, to apply the sense of a governor because Nobody is happy. Nobody, no, 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 nobody is, 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 I mean, and enough, I mean, there's a limit to endurance. That's the way I look at it. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, uh, Alaji Suva, and also for holding on while uh, Dr. Yusuf was explaining. So you can see people are getting frustrated. And yeah. you spoke worryingly about the rate, uh, the, the impact of all of this on, 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 on inflation, on yeah. the inflation rate. I think uh, a couple of months ago we were speaking here, and I think the figure was around 27% yeah. or something like that. So there's a danger that you could actually go higher. It's, it's than going that. to go higher with what is happening now. Because even for those in production, they are key inputs. The cost of their inputs are going up. That is a fact. And if the cost of your input is going up, your cost of production goes up, your prices go up, the people are already impoverished, how are you going to sustain the business? So for me, I think we need to have further interrogate the appropriateness of some of these policies, especially around these effects and around this uh, issue of interest rates. But that is not to diminish the efforts that are ongoing. You know? I was going to ask uh, that, yes. um, were they not well thought out, these policies that are put down 
on the ground. I mean, what, what are people, why do we find ourselves in this kind of a situation? If they were well thought out, maybe that's, uh, it's, maybe people can say, see, that's easy for you to ask, but this is real life. Yes, it's, they, they were well thought out. But, you know, economics is social science. It's not an exact science. It's not like physics or chemistry. Where you can predict with accuracy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's a kind of discipline where there are variables that will impact your outcome that you may not have factored in in the process of formulating the policy. Yeah, but but as you go along, mm -hmm. that is why I was talking about reviewing things as you go along. Yes, yes, if you are yes. not getting results, because I keep saying it, the whole essence of economic management is about human beings. Indeed. Well, it's well, about their welfare, it's about employment, it's about productivity. Come so back. we need to calibrate these things in a way that will achieve that objective. We should not be fixated about anything. Mazio um, Korafo in Arochuku. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Sayori. You see, when we talk about when you say how do you find ourselves in this situation, you see, as much as Nigerians sit down now and look at the politics, the politics in Nigeria as based on that you cannot move forward. You ask yourself, why is it that IMF? Uh, World Bank dictates for Africa. At the end of the day, all these conditions does not favor Africa per se. Because Africans are just the way we have the high level of illiteracy. And because of the high level of illiteracy, when you bring in the policy, people that the policy does not work well for them, they feel that they should go back to the cage. That is the problem. Many people don't want to migrate to what you call digital. Look at why it has come back, come back with a new system of uh, CTB uh, exam, so that we migrate to digital exams for, for, for secondary schools. The simple thing is that, so that is why Nigeria is having a serious problem. In as much as the system, local government system, continue hoping for federal government subvention for solutions, we cannot accept the system and harness all the natural resources. Not that data data, or it is there. Look, come down to the north. You have all the mineral resources you can get. The one we use in manufacturing bomb, we we'll name them. They are all in the north. Now you ask yourself, are this is not being harnessed illegally? So foreigners will come and join the local people and harness it. I made that place of governable, so called terrorists, attacking the Bush people out from that place. So unless the state government and local government see that harness this is from our own place, that is so you can. Now when you look at this, you should have asked the high level, you talk about high level of economy. Uh, now do you know that? We are the cause of all these kinds of problems. If the use the local government and this is and tap it and make use of it, their unemployment, they will not nobody think about increment. I was looking at the some people last day, they, 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 so few days ago. We were talking at three hundred thousand. No matter what we pay, you can have this to one million. As long as we continue importing food access into this country, we are not making it. Go back to the school to lab program, which of us just the same deal when they were the military. So that each local government Go back and ask energy, local government, state, and then their own, it will move. You took industries in Lagos, yes, Lagos is number one. Like I used to tell people, said, go and look at uh, what map. Lagos is still there. Abuja is not there. So when the federal government says, let's take all this back to where they are so that we can make use of the places. So right. complaining. Oh. After last year, I said, go and look the world, whether you see Abuja there. Okay, okay. okay. Mazi. Uh, thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mazi, uh, with that contribution. Uh, you were saying, um, one, on the one hand, that they, we probably need to take a look at some of those policy yeah, you know, we, we guidelines. To, and you also, you also made the point about, well, you see, um, economics uh, being what it is, it's not, it's not that kind of a science. It's not an exact science and all of that. But uh, exactly. And people who are talented in being able to uh, understand it and predict it. I mean, there was a time when the whole world was uh, n names like, not in our country, like Alan Greenspan, for example. Uh, he, he was known, he, uh, apparently he did, uh, as far as economists are concerned, he did a great, he did well. People wouldn't understand at the time, perhaps, uh, but in the fullness of time, you see that, wow, how was, was, the, was witchcraft involved? Uh, so this predictability, don't we have those kind of uh, scientific economists, so to speak? No, that, that is why I was saying that, you know, we need a much broader view of things okay. beyond 
the narrow view of just looking purely at the financial markets. You know, in economics, there is what you call a general equilibrium approach okay. to economic management. There is general equilibrium, there is partial equilibrium. A general equilibrium approach is to look at the economic policies and look at its implication for other aspects of the economy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. including economic development, including production, including the welfare of the people. Yeah, but, sir, that is the whole idea. That, uh, that is the whole idea. That is the whole idea. Are we achieving that? that? That is why I'm saying that, yes, the policies may be right so far, but given the impact of that, of that trajectory on, on production, on welfare, on poverty, on inflation, we need to step back and take a review of it. And that will involve you know, some building of consensus. Maybe ideologically. And, and it need be a rejigging. A rejigging of, of, it. of, of some of these. And we uh, should not be too fixated on free markets. Yeah. And unific I keep saying it, particular about this particular we should not, point. Yes, we should not be fixated on it. Because we are, we are having a society where a lot of people now are being left behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is not good for our stability. Because, and the way inflation is going now, the, 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 the ordinary person, which I think is in the vast majority in this country, is completely cut out exactly. of, of, of is, living a meaningful is, life that is my in worry. Nigeria. That is my yeah. worry. So there's a limit to the orthodox ways of doing things because of the imperfections. Do we have those in the system that can do the needful, in your no, opinion? No, of course. I mean, we have people in Central Bank. We have the coordinating minister. We have the Ministry of uh, National Planning and Budget. I mean, these are... This, this are all, 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 yes, all there has to be some... Can actually address they they this can situation. interrogate it. We should not and just leave the situation well, like, the way it is. I like the expression. Interrogate interrogate the situation it. the way yes. it is now. And let me say this, you know. Please, I want to appeal to the CBM. They should leave the exchange rate for the computation of import duty the way it is. Okay. It's 950. That is high enough. I'm getting report now it has been removed to 1,300. From, from less than 1,000. Yes. No. So for everything you import now, it will be multiplied by that 1,300 before they now start the computation of import duty port levy, and all of that. We are really in a that's, very, that's, very that, difficult that, position. We cannot absorb uh, that. Indeed. Please. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yusuf. You've explained it to us, but the explanation uh, doesn't give us soccer. It just sort of explains why the pains are what they are. And um, uh, something is just going to have to be done. People who aren't even experts know that something is not quite working. Something is not quite working. And um, Dr. Yusuf's... Um, recommendation is that the whole system needs to be interrogated and to see what needs to be rejigged. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf, as always. Uh, Dr. You. Muda Yusuf for coming on the program, uh, CEO Center for the Promotion of Private uh, Enterprise. Okay, so that's our program today. Please join us on Monday for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folari. Do have a great weekend.